Welcome in. I'm your guiding light for tri times of trouble, tumult, chaos, even the good times. Let's roll. All right, welcome in. Let's see what we have going on today. So, Futures are up, everything's soaring. Om Omicron is no more, it doesn't matter anymore. Um, I have lots of interesting news today. It's very random, but we're gonna talk about it and let's see where things go from here. So, of course, everybody wants to talk about Intel. Do I wanna talk about Intel right now? All right, we'll talk about Intel right now. So Intel, no more, or is it a dead company? Every company, now I have Toyota, Disruptive, Intel's disruptive, everything's disruptive. I think I need more bells. That's what I that's the moral of the story here. So Intel plans to take its self-driving car Mobileye public. This is going to happen in 2022. Intel said on Monday that it plans to take self-driving unit Mobileye public in the United States in mid-2022, a deal um, which could value the Israeli unit at more than $50 billion. So get your oven mitts ready. Chip giant Intel, the largest employer of Israeli Israel's high-tech industry with nearly 14,000 workers expect to retain Mobileye's executive team and hold on to a majority ownership of the of the IPO. So they have no intention. So this is a, this is for the investors in the company. No intention to divest or spin off the majority ownership in Mobileye. This is important for you to know. Intel bought Mobileye for $15.3 billion in 2017, putting it into direct competition with rivals like NVIDIA and Qualcomm to develop driverless systems for global automakers. The company eventually plans to build its own LiDAR sensor, which helps the car map out three-dimensional views of the road using... All right, so I have this uh, Tesla. I'll tell you what, is this uh, self-driving car stuff, it's, it's pretty sweet, but in my opinion, it has a long way to go. Uh, that's just my personal opinion, but what do I know? Despite the, the uh, being owned by Intel, Mobileye has never used Intel's factories to make its chips. Instead, it relies on Taiwan Semiconductors for all of its IQ chips. So this is going to be interesting. That's Intel. Now, what do I think about it? This reaction is insane. I mean, that's what I think about it. You look at the company goes up 8%. I thought it was up 8% last night on something worthwhile. And now I look at it as a jump in stock price for something that's going to happen maybe in the future if if 
if everything works. The, I mean, to me, this thing jumped up here. I'm just gonna tell you guys right now, I'm taking profits today. I, and I own this from a value perspective. I'm taking profits today because I don't think that it's warranted. Uh, could I be wrong? Sure. But it's not like something special change in the company. Speaking of disruption, Toyota to build a, a new $1.3 billion plant in North Carolina. So they announced on Monday that they're going to spend $1.3 billion creating 1,750 new jobs. Um, it's going to start, you're going to be able to start building in 2025. They're going to build 800,000 vehicles annually. They're going to hold a 90% stake in the company. And it's going to be for the EVs and hybrid vehicles. And they said that they expand, they plan to expand it up to at least six production lines for up to 1.2 million batteries annually. So uh, more disruption. And I've said it multiple times, and I'm, I'm not even joking when I say this right now. I do think that the companies that are going to be able to compete with the Teslas of the world are going to be your Toyotas, your Fords, your, your, your uh, Chevys, et cetera. It's not going to be these Rivians and, and anything, not any time in the near future, at least. So that is... Um, that's just what I think about that. So uh, that's disruption for you. So I don't really know where else to go from here. Let's go to Apple. Apple has been perplexing me of late. You guys heard me talk about the stories that I was mentioning last week with um, everybody saying, okay, we need to go to cash flow, positive businesses and good businesses with tons of money and, and they can withstand um, de decelerated growth and this and that. Apple runs to an all time high. Then, it, then they, they come out and they say, well, we, we're seeing less demand for iPhone. So Apple falls right back down. Now we're getting another boost. Virtual reality. They're talking about their, basically, they're talking about their own Oculus. I'm going to use o Oculus because everybody knows what that is. So this person from, what fund is this? This lady, oh, what was her name? Um, Kathy Huberty from where? She's an analyst from doesn't matter. She moves her target price to $200 a share. For, so look out for that. VR and auto, autonomous vehicles. Again, this is all just, I think people are putting way too much stock into this kind of stuff and not enough stock into the subscription businesses of Apple. Look at these glasses. So this is from Mac Rumors. This is one of my favorite tech blog websites. Apple's uh, secret augmented and virtual reality. So basically it looks like a pair of uh, snow, snow, snowmobiling goggles and it's going to look like the Oculus. Now here it is. Apple, this is, what, this is where it becomes cool. They're working on multiple methods, including a thimble-like device to be worn on a person's finger, and that's gonna track movement instead of these goofy handheld things that uh, Facebook gave us. Um, what else? Apple wants to create a headset focusing on gaming, streaming, video, conferencing. It's also gonna have FaceTime. And then here's the kicker. The information, whatever this, this journal is whatever says that Apple is discussing the price of a headset around three thousand dollars. Apple is the most expensive for everything. Three thousand dollars compared to four hundred bucks. Okay, I don't know about that. And then you're going to start pricing in their cars. Their cars are going to be so damn expensive. They're going to be like the Lamborghinis and Ferraris of um, of cars. It's not going to be like it's your normal your normal your normal car prices for the everyday driver. It's not going to be a Model Three driving down the road. So that's that. The metaverse. This story is blowing my mind. So the metaverse is selling real estate. The latest hot real estate market isn't on the scenic coast or the balmy sunbelt cities. It's in the metaverse where gamers are flocking to digital properties and sales are setting new records. A growing number of investment firms are acquiring digital lamb, land and probably lambs in the world such as Sandbox and you should just go be a farmer in the metaverse if you don't have a job. God, this really is everything money. I solved the world's problems on this show in, in a 30 minute period. Where multiplayers simulate real life pursuits from shopping to attending concerts. They are betting that individuals and companies will spend money on virtual homes and real estate. So everything in this world is my understanding in my very, very basic understanding is being paid for in cryptocurrency. So I think we finally found a use for crypto. That interest reached a new peak on Tuesday when public realm a firm that develops real estate in the metaverse paid $4.3 million for land on the World Sandbox, the biggest virtual real estate sale publicized to date, according to the company of nonfungible.com. There was a there was another deal last week on tokens.com corp. Oh, this is the that's the company. They paid $2.5 million. 
This is like this person said, this is like buying land in Manhattan 250 years ago as the city was being built. If you've never watched The Office, you should, but this is like when Dwight Schrute wants to disconnect from reality, so he joins this game called Second Life. And then people that want to disconnect even further from reality, it's Second Second Life. And uh, that's what I'm seeing right here. I can't, it's either I'm too smart for this or I'm really damn stupid. It's one of the two because I can't wrap my mind around this. I, I just don't get it. The digital world is featuring apartments or lounges where people can actually hang out. That's, that's understandable. The real estate investors are looking to sell homes and blah, 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 cryptocurrency, la, la, la. Prices can also, I don't know. In a physical world, oh, this is good. This is a good one. As in a physical world, zoning limits what, where, what and where a company can build. In, and in the metaverse, okay, in theory, you can actually just start going up because you can have levitating things above the ground. So there's really no... You don't have to live on the ground. You could just fly. And then you're also going to be able to create, this is what I've heard. You're going to be able to create some Rodeo Drives or Fifth Avenues where Gucci's and Adidas will be able to come and come and uh, do it. This is epic. This is epic. I, I, I just don't know. I just love it though. I love it. All right. When it comes to the NVIDIA thing, I told you guys when this thing got up to all-time highs, I said it's going to pull straight back down. It already has. It's in correction territory. AMD is in correction territory. Uh, let's just pull those up real quick just to show you. This is completely crazy. I'm telling you, if this breaks through this level solidly, it's going to come back down to this 220 level, maybe 230. And AMD, let's see AMD real quick. AMD, same thing. Flagpole straight up, and it's going to come straight back down, and this is going to come back into this 120 area. So be careful with that one if uh, if you're in it. That is... Um, that's all I have to say about that one, I think. Yeah. Um, and NVIDIA's had some bad something bad happen. And they were gonna do a $40 billion acquisition of something, and the SoftBank closed them. Yeah, either way, it doesn't really matter unless you're an investor in them. Omicron is prompting new rules for international travel. PSA announcement to everybody out there. Here we go. This is just in case you're traveling, I am, so I find it interesting. What's changing? Starting Monday, air travelers flying into the United States from abroad will need to show airlines proof of a negative COVID test that was taken within one day. One day, not three days, one day. That includes U.S. citizen and vaccinated passengers. When do air travel have to take a test? One day. What types of tests? Answer, okay, basically, you can take anything you want, but check with your country. The United States does not require testing upon landing in the United States, and the new rules are solely for air travel. So... I just wanted to tell you guys that because I have to know that. The Fed is widely seen as backing faster taper. What is he doing? He's adjusting his Rolex. That's, that's cocky. All right. So economists think that Jay Powell is going to take next week and December 14th and 15th. That's a meeting. They say they're going to taper faster. Everything was based on jobs numbers. They said it was going to be jobs numbers, jobs numbers, jobs numbers. Jobs numbers came out on Friday. They were terrible. Unemployment rate is down because less people are looking, but I guess we're still going to taper. So everything that they said in the past about maximum employment and whatnot doesn't matter. That's really what it comes down to. They, he was, he's been pretty straightforward in his comments saying that we're going to do, we're going to double the tapering starting this month and we will end tapering around March. Um, what happened to cause this? The Fed, the, the surprise strength of inflation, the Fed, cause sticker shock. We're going to see more. We're going to see the new CPI number on Friday. So that'll be a very interesting number. And I won't be here, but I'll be in the bid and ask and we'll talk about it on Friday. The central bank does not want to be raising rates while it's still buying securities, which is what it would be doing if it started raising rates and doing quantitative easing at the same time. So we're going to see what that taper comes down to. Um, this here was just a couple of estimates that people were making. Pending what unfolds on the COVID, Brace for rate hikes this spring. That's what somebody from BMO said. Economists at Barclays are now predicting three rate hike hikes next year, which would put the base, if they keep them at a quarter basis point each, it would be point, uh, 0.75 by the end of the year. Starting in March, one in June, one in September. So we will see. That's it. Interesting. Interesting stuff. I told you the news was random. It was all over the place. It was from disruption to owning homes that you don't own to cryptocurrency to the Fed to NVIDIA, to Apple, here we are. Oh, follow us on Instagram, at TraderMo underscore EM, at Paul Gabriel, at Seth Kirchanan. 
Let's go here and see what the market is doing. I'm sure it's just soaring. The plunger protection team is at work. They got their plungers out and they are plunging the poop like nobody's business. The rates are, the yields are up a little bit. Um, let's see what's happening with these. I want to, the 10 and the 20, I mean, I'm sorry, the 20 and the 30, they're narrowing um, actually. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. And what's happening today? Charge point reports after the bell, Dave and Buster's, Toll Brothers. I know some of you guys are invested in that that I've seen kicking around. Game stops tomorrow, so get out your oven mitts. RH, I don't know. I don't know if that's restoration hardware or not. Cost Co, Lulu, Chewy, Oracle. Thursday's a big day, so keep a watch on it. If you want to join the software, here it is. You get the eight pillar software, retirement calculator software, stock analyzer tool, eight pillars portfolio, where you could basically build your own ETF. Then you get all of these different things, which are going to be coming soon. You already get exclusive content, two videos a day from Seth, Paul, and myself. Click here, join EM. $30 a month gets you access to that. If you want to join the Bidnask Nation and jump into the trading tier with me, $80 a month gets you that. I will tell you guys, I'm going to be starting to day trade a little bit more. So uh, get your oven mitts ready and you'll have my five stocks that I, I already told you guys tons of times what my five stocks are. So if you didn't hear it, that's... Too bad. I don't really know what to tell you. Um, Discord community of 900 plus people. If you want to join Paul's Super Shorts, $500 gets you access to that. One-on-one -on -one trading session with me, $750 for a one-hour Zoom session. We talk about whatever you want to talk about. If you want to do trading, we'll do it and um, knock out the kinks. Get them in before the end of the year. Start off on the right foot for 2022. And if you want to do a real estate deal with Paul, $10,000 for four hours of his time. And that's disruptive. So Send me some stocks, guys, and we'll hit them, and we'll go from there. I get all my financial from advice from YouTube. Well, as long as you're getting it from one channel, you'll be all right. If you start getting them from multiple channels, that's not all right. A taper tantrum. The taper tantrum lasted about four seconds. Now with dark mode, that is correct. All right. Um, congrats to my, to my AZO fam. Let's see what happened to AutoZone. Oh, a little gap up there, huh? From what? December 7th. Oh, earnings. Okay. So they beat, they beat top and bottom line and they went up in price. That's rare for this time of year. If I was you, I would be taking profits going into this all time high. You can even notice it gapped right up and it stopped right below its all time high at the top of that wick. So that is exactly what I would do is pull, just take profits on that thing and see what happens. Um, Mo, let's look at docu. What's DocU doing? So they're pulling back a little bit. This is why I said, don't go and short them. To Yesterday, I said this. I said, don't go on and just start shorting them because they dropped. We're going to see what's going to happen. Um, it's still a downtrend. There's no doubt. You're starting to get a little roll over here, but just calm down, see what's going to happen here. If you break out and clear this high, then you can go ahead and take some kind of position on it. If you come down here and clear this low, then you can go out and take some kind of position, but let some kind of, let some kind of decision happen one direction or the other. Next, CMI. Is that Cummins? Yup. Great engines. All right. So I'm zooming out. Just I want to see whatever support we're sitting at. And we are sitting at somewhat of a consolidation area in this range. Nothing, nothing too crazy. So what I would do is come right over here from a swing trading perspective. Next engulfing candlestick. I bet this yellow line moves into the sweet spot. Go ahead and go long on it. And you'll have yourself a nice little position there. What else do we have here? Mongo. I don't know what Mongo is. Ba Baidu. Um, well, it's probably doing what every other Chinese company is doing, rebounding, right? All right. So let's see here. Let's come over here. I would, you know, it's, this Chinese stuff, I wouldn't even look over here. I would come right over here and follow this. Just move with it. If you get an engulfing candlestick today, make sure you get this yellow line moving into the sweet spot. Let me clear that so you can see it. I need this yellow line to move into the sweet spot like so. So Wait till you get that. It'll probably be over this 152 level. You probably don't want to hear that, but that is what it is. So uh, YOLO a position. Hey, whatever. Mo bought a tracker share yesterday. Should I wait until it's in the sweet spot? Um, let's look at Peloton. Peloton is just consolidating. It's sitting there. I, there's a nice gap that's going to need to be filled. You know, it's going to take it's going to take time and it's going to take a lot of it'll probably take earnings to get it a little bit of a boost. Um, but it's going to take some time. All right, Disney. Disney has been beaten down pretty significantly. Little, okay, now they're starting to rebound. The, this is the uh, this is the mind-blowing stock of, of my life. 
So they do have a nice gap to fill up here. Um, I don't know what the value is on Disney. I don't know what our value was. Maybe it was 120, but they hey, they've been beaten down pretty nicely. They're starting to create this little uh, W formation to move up. I would keep watching them. Keep watching them from a swing trading perspective. You still don't have anything from a long-term perspective. Uh, DGX. Is this Quest Diagnostics? Yes, it sure is. So I would be taking profits up here. You're running in all-time highs. You're struggling to beat them. Um, yep, I would, be, I would just be, you've caught a very nice run. I would start taking profits right now. And if you start breaking through these levels of 160, then you can sure, you can go ahead and keep getting at it. But I would just be, uh, I would be very patient right now. Amex, I like Amex and, oh, it's, it's APX, not Amex. Um, no, it's not, AXP, American Express. Okay, so it's coming up through the 200 day moving average, which, all right, here we go. So this thing fell below the 200 day moving average here, tried to get back up, failed and fell back down here. Yesterday, same thing and it failed. So we've gapped up above the 200 day moving average today. Is it gonna hold? That's the question. Do not do anything today. If you close the day above the 200 day moving average, you can probably look at it tomorrow, but do not do something with it today and without stops in place because I do not think, I'm not convinced that this thing is gonna go above and close above the 200 day moving average. Why is Square almost at a 52 week low? Um, well, I have no idea, but maybe they're not disruptive anymore. I don't know. Uh, it's just, but you're at a little bit of a consolidation area, not a strong one. If this thing, so we've bumped up a little bit in price today. The sell, the volume has just been all over the map for the last three months. Uh, okay. So here your stochastic is doing nothing. You can't do anything from a swing trading perspective, short term, long term. You can't even do anything from there. I would stick to the day trades on this guys and, uh, just roll with it that way. Uh, ba, 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 ba. oh, I don't, come on. I don't want to do Baba again, guys. Baba is doing what it's doing. You're not going to, I don't, I don't suggest that you get into it long-term right now. And you know that Nautilus is really breaking down and this is an incredible, so this is really a 50% stock. Now, um, you have your high and you have your low of 52 weeks. This is going to struggle to get through $18 again. And not only that, it's going to have to break through four moving averages with that $18. So if you want to, you can come over here and swing trade it or throw a tracker share on it, but I wouldn't put too much stock into this thing um, doing that. All right, let's do this, Baba. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Guys, nothing is changing over here. I, I Still, your, your trend is down, and you got to look over here and see if you can get some kind of swing out of it. You're probably not going to be at, you might be adding today, but make sure you're getting engulfing candlestick. Take profits going into 148, which is the 25-day moving average. Tap. Let's see. We haven't done tap in a while. Tap is a value play. Um, and they are up to about $47. So where is this? Yeah. Okay. All right. So here's the, here's the deal. Let's look at this stochastic right here. This is why you wait three days. You want confidence that you're going to stay in there and continue this uptrend. And now we're rolling over and coming straight down. So this is what happened. This is why I want three days of confirmation of being in the sweet spot and actually making a move to the top. And when I say three days, I want three days of red and yellow being in the sweet spot. I would just come over here. It can't break through its hundred. If you get an engulfing candlestick today that breaks out above the 100, closes above the 100, then you can do something with it tomorrow. And you'll have a very nice run up to the 200 day moving average, but make sure you close above that 100 day moving average. Intel, I haven't done this one. So Intel, I'm, I'm personally, I'm in this for value play and I'm taking profits today because this reaction to something dumb is absurd. And that is just my opinion. Do with it what you want. You are getting a very nice move right now um, to the top side based on their creating an, their spinoff of EV. This is going to come back down, guys. I'm telling you right now. This move up here, it's come right up to this resistance point of 55. It is going to fall back down. I'm telling you right now, that's what's going to happen. All right. Um, S I V B. Thanks for the donation. VJ. What was your thing? Average buy price of 728. Oh, okay. So you bought it at 728. So, um, first of all, 
I don't know why you bought it at 728. I don't know. I haven't seen your name before, so I'm just guessing that you're not in the bid and ask or have followed before because you were in a certain downtrend at that point. Uh, you were right around here. So you were not in a buying position, nor were you in a buying position over here. So hmm, what would I tell you right now? The good news is you're sitting in some kind of consolidation channel. It might pop up for you. See what happens and try to swing trade. And if you don't know how to swing trade, come and join me in the Bid and Ask Nation. I'll teach you how to do it. You'll get all my rules and uh, regulations. Can you do UPST? Is this upstart? What is upstart? Uh, when do they go public? December 16th. All right, so we're right there. So we basically have a year. Um, upstart. Yeah, you're not. I mean, you're you're holding a you're holding a consolidation point right now. Let's see if we can. You're but oh, okay. So you're sitting right at the 200. Here's what you're gonna need to do. You're either gonna come above the 200 strongly, or you're gonna go below it. So this is the decision that needs to be made. And there's no consensus right now. It looks like there's selling volume, but you know what? Give it a couple of days. See what happens over the next couple of days, and go from there. Um, Pepsi. Let's see with Pepsi. Oh, they, Pepsi got a little gap up. And again, this is uh, profit taking in my opinion. Guys, smash the like button for me. I would say smash the dislike button, but if you don't like me, but nobody can see it. So you might as well just smash the like button because you're not going to hurt anybody's feelings except for, well, not mine. Um, unfortunately, I like the dislike button. It's so sad. Um, so you're at all time highs with Pepsi. Guys, if you're in this, take profits, take profits, take profits. So if you've if you have a thousand dollars worth of shit of stock, and you're up ten percent, so you have eleven hundred dollars in your account now. Sell one hundred dollars worth of shares and go to back to your cost basis of a thousand dollars. That's what taking profits means. So uh, or whatever math it is for you, but go ahead and do that. Okay, next. Um, fastly, I haven't done fastly in a long time. Oh no, fast and all. I don't know what fastly is. All right. Oh, fast and all. Same thing. Take profits. Take profits. Fastly, F S O. Oh, this one. Yeah, I haven't done this one in a while. What do we got here? Oh, yikes. Um, what is this date? October of 2020. So you have a 50 percenter right here. So you have your high and you have your low, and here's your middle ground. And you're gonna struggle very hard to get through this 80, 85 level, wherever the wherever the middle ground is. So um, keep watching the volume. See if you can get some kind of swing trade out of it. But right now, I wouldn't even be looking at this thing. I would find a better stock, to be honest with you. HPQ. What's HPQ doing? So that thing jumped up, and it's still moving. Let's pull up a line chart. I just want to see. Okay, no, it's creating very nice Ws. Big gap up. Two Ws. Two great Ws. So let's see if it does it again. I would like to see a pullback, and then I would like to see it go again. That is that is what I want to see from this. I don't want to just see this thing go off the screen to the moon because that wouldn't be great. Um, lows, haven't done lows in a while. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Lows, lows, lows. So lows is approaching all time highs again, take profits. This is this is a, lows is a great example of a stock of why you take profits and you, why you don't sell. Same with Home Depot. When you, when you get up to these all time highs, here was an all time high. You got up there, take profits. Wait, 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 wait. You're still in the position. You just have profits. Then it starts to move up. You add back on. Again, all time highs trying to break above it, falls back down. Wait, 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 go back at it. Here we go again. All time highs, take profits. Wait, 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 wait. If it breaks out again, go for it. So there's no point of exiting positions. When I say take profits, I don't mean exit positions. I mean, um, <laughs> somebody just made a good comment. Okay, Twitter. Twitter got a little bit beat up the other day because old Jack Dorsey, Got the ax. Well, actually, he stepped down, but um, let's see here. So what would I do? I wouldn't even look at this. I would come over here, wait for, wait to get some buying volume, wait to get in the sweet spot. But until then, throw it on over on a day trading chart and just day trade it, guys. This That's a way to play this thing. Um, PayPal. We haven't done PayPal in a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean since like Friday. Um, complete dog stock. If you want to... Actually, if there's any stock that's expensive... Price wise, dollar cost, dollar wise, and you want to throw a tracker share on it, and it's probably worth it. It's probably PayPal. 188 bucks. Worst case scenario, PayPal goes out of business, never exists again. You lose 188 dollars. Best case, this thing slowly, slowly turns up, 
every investment bank in the whole world starts getting into it and it, and it moves up to the top about $300 and you were in at about $200, $210. So that is something I would do right around there. Very good looking uh, stock. Um, Momo, <laughs> another Chinese one, same situation, falling down, rebounding back up. Um, don't look at it from a long-term perspective. Come over here, keep watching it, let it get into the sweet spot. Until then, day trade it. That's it. Day trade it, guys. Anything like this, just day trade it. Biogen. Keep, people have been asking me about Biogen from a long-term value perspective. I like the levels. Yes, I like the levels it's at at 224. I don't like the freaking chaos with this company. The, the, I don't know this for sure, but the management, to me, something is wrong because there is so much chaos with this company. You should not be seeing this. I mean, massive gap. Massive gap. Look at this intraday craziness, intraday craziness, intraday craziness. This was like 50% or something. Oh, come on. And then and then an incredible fall back down to, was this COVID levels? No, pre-COVID levels. So guys, I just don't, to me, there's better op opportunities out there in the pharma world from a value side. Now, from a trading side, you're, you're definitely sitting at a, I don't know why I just zoomed off that. You're definitely sitting at a consolidation level right here and, and, a, and a very strong base. So maybe maybe put this on a very tight watch list, see if you can get movement back into the sweet spot. But right now, I'm not, I'm not loving Biogen. That's all. That's about that. Okay, BBY. What's happening with BBY? They fell apart bigly. They're into their consolidation area. Big downtrend. Let's pull up the line chart and just see. Yeah, that's insane. But this that 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 happens. So we'll see. Um, the good news is there's no, there was no resistance created in there. You didn't have M formations coming down. You just had a straight fall. So that means that there's less resistance going back up. So your climb back up will be a little bit easier. Your biggest challenge is going to get through these four major moving averages, which is really no surprise. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's see. Ford coming down soon. Let's see. Okay. So Ford is consolidating. Yeah. It looks like from a long-term perspective, we're starting to get this little bit of roll over here. So we'll see what happens there. Okay. Markets are open now. If this thing moves down and breaks this 1850 level, probably 18 level, let's pull up a line chart real quick. If this breaks down to about 19 bucks, you can, I think you'll get a very confident short on it and you could probably short it down to about 1650. You're gonna remember, pay attention to the moving averages, but uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a rough go for you. All right, guys, I'll do two more stocks and I'm gonna get out of here. Um, what tool do you use right now to see the charts? I use TradingView. Um, Bigly Lots, done. Big Lots is getting ooh, ooh, beat down. All right, let's see what, what we got here. So it, ev it even tried to make that climb and it fell right back down. You can see the red line is rolling over. So let's come over here. I need to reset this, option R. I need to option R this. And I don't have a stochastic, that's sick. All right, cool. Hold on. All right, here we go. So what would I do here? Well, you're sitting right at the 25 day moving average. So just let this thing get a little bit of boost going up. See if you can get some good buying volume coming in here and try to swing trade this back up to the all time. Well, are they all time highs? Up to those highs. Yes, all time highs. Uh, wait, this is Ford. This is Ford. There we go. Okay, so you're still getting that same kind of movement down here. A Little bit of rollover. Yeah, run it up to the 2550, take profits. In my opinion, don't even look at big lots. All of that that I just did was for nothing. Um, AT, impossible. I don't know what stock you want. So BMY bounced through nice consolidation. Let's see. Bristol has a nice little bounce up. Yes, good little swing trade that's been created, even though those I don't really like those candlesticks with all those wicks, but... If you want to throw a tracker share on this one from a long-term perspective, that would be good. If this can get over the 50 and 25 day moving average, you'll have a really nice go to about $62. So, all right, guys, that's it for today. I will see you back here in 23 and a half hours. Same time, same place. Go make disruption. Every company is disruptive. Remember, if a company comes out with EV, it's disruptive. Somebody tweet Kathy Wood. Make sure she knows that I think Intel and Toyota are disruptive. See ya. Thank you.